सुनिए मेरी बात मैंने आज से दस साल पहले सपना देखा इंडिया को चश्मा पहनाने का बहुत बार गिरा हूँ बहुत बार खड़ा हुआ हूँ आज एक और बड़ा सपना देख रहा हूँ पूरे विश्व को चश्मा पहनाने का डिड यू नो That one in every three Indians needs vision correction. In India, spectacles constitute nearly three quarters of the total eyewear market. The market is heavily unorganized, with more than 70% of the market share maintained by the unorganized sector even now. Lenskart saw an opportunity to disrupt this industry and made its entry into the eyewear market in India, making a name for itself in just over a decade. Initially, Pius Bansal and Amit Chaudhary started Value Technologies with a simple idea to provide value to customers. Under this company, they launched multiple businesses with the suffix cart such as watch cart, jewel cart, bag cart and lens cart. In 2014, they noticed lens cart was gaining momentum and they decided to focus on it all in. What problem did lens cart try to solve with their entry into the eyewear market? You see, the eyewear market used to be filled with mediocre products boring frame designs and shops offering no guarantees of quality the way this shop secured sales was through their partnerships with ophthalmologists similar to how doctors and their affiliated pharmacies function they saw an opportunity to disrupt this almost 10 billion dollar industry in india by a superior product and better customer experience now let's take a look at some of the clever retail product marketing and business strategies that lenskart adopted to innovate and gain about 25% market share in the organized indian eyewear space offline stores first things first lenskart took a two pronged approach of both offline and online when they decided to start out the buying journey of eyewear involves a lot of offline touch points you go to a doctor get your eyes dilated wait for a while struggle to read some small letters and then you get prescribed glasses and then you go ahead and purchase the glasses This was a behavior that had been built over the years. Hence, Lenska started with an offline store back in 2010 when they began. Soon after this, they also started bringing convenience to their customers by introducing robotic automated eye testing. This removed the friction for customers and made the entire process shorter and smoother. They also offered products at affordable prices, quick shipping and easy returns. which further accelerated the adoption for new users they also knew that the real money was to be made on lenses and not frames hence they ran attractive offers that gave frames for free or included a buy one get one offers in 2013 they launched the lens card at home service which offered at home eye checkups by trained optometrists they offered free eye testing to attract new customers and aged people and made the entire process more convenient for them on the product side Lenskart has a very well designed app already but what makes it even more interesting is the presence of some of the innovative features that they have built over the years for example the virtual try on feature people were already used to buying glasses in physical stores and trying on multiple frames hence lenskart decided to replicate that experience by introducing virtual try on on their apps they are leveraging cutting edge technologies like ar to facilitate this experience digitally Another great feature on the Lenskart app is their AI powered personalized recommendations. By combining high quality pictures captured by their customers with anonymized data from other users, Lenskart's AI algorithm can accurately determine glasses that would complement an individual's facial features. This AI driven approach has significantly reduced the time customers need to spend finding the perfect pair of glasses for themselves. Until now we talked about why they started offline stores and the interesting innovations that they did on the app side. Let's talk about how they got customers. They have actually done quite a lot when it comes to marketing, but if I had to pick only two when it comes to brand building and momentum, I would pick these two. Number 1, celebrity endorsements. Lenskart tapped into popular celebrities like Katrina Kaif, Karan Johar and Kiara Adwari to cement the fashion angle of the eyewear brand that they were trying to build. Katrina Kaif was the first celebrity they roped in as their first brand ambassador and here is the reasoning for it by Lenskart executives. Eyewear is a male dominated category with about 70% of men wearing spectacles and Lenskart is betting that getting a female celebrity will help change the ratio of spectacles being used by both men and women. Number 2, app launch and referral. In 2018, Lenskart also launched their app for the first time. and hit a whopping 1 million downloads in the first month itself. Lenskart then started a referral and rewards program for contact syncing. 
and that resulted in over 200 million contacts getting synced in just a span of six months. This surprisingly also resulted in 200% increase in sales over the next few months. Now let's talk about some of the unique growth levers that they pulled off, starting with launching their own sub-brands. In 2015, Lenskart launched their eyewear brand called John Jacobs. A premium yet affordable range of glasses. In the first two years of operations, they started five standalone offline stores across Delhi, Gurugram and Bangalore, complementing their online distribution strategy. And they clocked over 100 crores in revenue. Just a few years later, in 2017, they launched an entry-level sub-brand called Vincent Chase, which made Lenskart even more accessible for their target customers. The second business strategy masterstroke that I would want to talk about would be they launching Lenskart Academy. As soon as they started rapid expansion of their offline stores across various cities, they realized the acute shortage of optometrists. Their website states that the country needs about 40,000 optometrists and we only have about 8,000. This was becoming a problem for Lenskart. For Lenskart, their optometrists were also the salesperson for their frames for those who opted for the home checkup services. To solve for this, they launched something called Lenskart Academy, which trains people in optometry and ensures that they get a job at Lenskart. The third business strategy that differentiated Lenskart from their competitors was heavy investment in manufacturing process. Typically, glasses are imported from countries like China in bulk and are bought by distributors who sell these to retail chains. On the other hand, Lenskart has made heavy investments in their manufacturing setup to optimize for cost, time and quality. Lenskart has advanced manufacturing robots with great precision. In 2023, they set up the world's largest eyewear manufacturing unit in Rajasthan. Its manufacturing facility in New Delhi currently manufactures 3 lakh glasses a month. In April 2024, Pius Bansal, the founder and CEO of Lenskart, expressed his interest in setting up a mega manufacturing facility in Bangalore via a LinkedIn post. Now that we have covered the different product, marketing and business strategies that they adopted, you must be curious to get a glimpse of their financials. On a standalone basis, Lenskart has been profitable and reported a net profit of Rs 138 crores in financial year 2023, a 25-fold jump from the previous fiscal. In financial year 2023, their sales also surged by 150% and they are inching closer to 4,000 crores revenue target. It currently operates more than 2,000 stores around the world, with majority of them being based in India. They have also been focusing on optimizing their supply chain and manufacturing cost. In fact, Pius Bansal recently mentioned that 40% of their potential customers still find Lenskart to be very expensive. And the way to optimize cost is to optimize manufacturing cost. In 2022, they made a strategic acquisition of the Japanese D2C brand Ondays to expand their footprint in Asian countries. Lenskart currently has 70 stores in Singapore and plans to expand into Thailand, followed by the Philippines. The company is also on its way to IPO in the next 24 months, and it will be interesting to see the further optimizations that they do to have a great listing. No plans of an IPO or no need for an IPO in the foreseeable future. IPO when the time is right in terms of over the next, I would say 24 to 36 months, I mean, no one can predict this. I would say there is no rush for an IPO to get the investors and exit because there has been decent, we at Let's Card also feel that we are still quite in the journey. With that, we come to the end of this episode of Scale by Airtribe. I would love to know in comments, what's your preferred way of buying eyewear? And if you have tried Lenskart already. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This is Navneet signing off.